Welcome to this brand new Football Manager 2018 Let's Play series where I'm going to be managing Hearts, the Scottish Premiership team based in Edinburgh. Hope you enjoyed those bagpipes. I just have to start off by apologising to any of my loyal subscribers that happen to support Hibs. You're not going to be happy at this decision, I know, but the reason why I'm managing Hearts, it's nothing to do with hating on Hibs or anything. I basically managed them on FM05 when I was about 13 or 14 years old, the first ever football manager after Championship Manager died a death. And I picked them purely because of the name and the colours really, because I support West Ham and they're, they're similar colours, not exactly the same colour. Uh, they're actually more similar to the Chelmsford City colours. I'm from Chelmsford and I just was attracted to them for that reason. And ever since then I've kind of followed Hearts. When I've looked at Scottish football I've kept my eye on Hearts. And they've had their ups and downs in recent years. There was, I think on FM05, they had quite a bit of money to spend from what I remember. And I actually managed to win the league at the first attempt. I kind of doubt that's going to happen this time around, but that's the aim of this series. I want to try and dislodge Celtic, which is no easy task because they have dominated Scottish football in the last few years. So welcome to episode one of Hearts of Gold. I've already played through pre-season and I've already started to fall in love with this squad. Uh, I'm oh, I'm really looking forward to this. I hope you guys are too. If you are, remember to hit that like button. That would be very much appreciated. Let's try and get as many likes as possible on this first episode just to ramp up this series. Uh, the aim of this series, once again, like the Porto Menensi one, I'm, I'm just wanting to have fun. But there is an aim to win the league. Like I said, I want to dislodge Celtic at the top of the Scottish Premiership and try and win as many trophies as possible in as short a space as time, of time as possible. I've not made any signings, and I don't think I will make any signings in this first season. I've kind of given myself an unofficial challenge of trying to do as well as possible in this first season with the squad that was given to me. This is on the winter update, so this is what the squad looks like as a result of all the changes with, with the win winter update. So there's quite a few players on loan, as you can see that there. Now, just a bit of admin. This first episode is just going to be me introducing the squad to you, looking through the expectations and where we're expected to, to finish in the league, team report, team dynamics, that sort of thing. Episode two, I'm going to concentrate on my next two games in the Betfred Cup group stage. We've already played two matches. We've got two more to go. And then episode three will be a massive opening day of the season to the Labricks Premiership as we take on the mighty Celtic. What a way to start the season. So that is the first three episodes. I'm going to try and get them up as quickly as possible. For those wondering about schedule, if, if it's a weekday, then the videos will go live at half three in the afternoon in the UK. So work out what time that is for you if you live elsewhere. If I do upload at the weekend, then it's usually in the morning before all the real life football in the afternoon. So I'm not guaranteeing this to be every day or every other day. I will upload when I get the opportunity to, but I'll try and make it as regular as possible for you guys. As you can see, pre-season's gone really well. We've actually gone unbeaten. We've also won our first two games of the Betfred Cup, three a six nil against Berwick Rangers. What a weird logo this is, by the way. I love it though. It's, it's quite strange. There's a bear with a tree somehow protruding out of it, which is just bizarre. As you can see, Lafferty, Carl Lafferty, what a striker to have at the squad, in the squad. He scored a hat-trick, so that's the first official game of the season, of course, and then we beat 4-4, 3-0, Lafferty with two more goals. So he's got five goals in his first two games. I know it's against easy opposition, but still, it's been a pretty decent start to pre-season. So let's have a look at the squad then. So three goalkeepers I've released one goalkeeper on a free although I had to pay him 12k to get rid of him but he's just useless and I couldn't get rid of him I couldn't sell him I couldn't loan him out or anything so I just I decided to take a loss and get rid of him we don't really have much in the way of transfer budget by the way 103k left 7.49k per week left to spend in the budget at uh, the wage budget uh, mainly because I've actually tried to spend quite a bit of money on scouting I've not got my head round scouting particularly this on, on FM18. I'm not, I'm not sure about the new system, uh, but what I did was I decided to, to pay for a UK, UK and Ireland senior package and just the Scottish youth package. So we're spending a bit of money on scouting, which is taken away from the transfer budget for this first season, but there wasn't enough money really to make a massive difference to this squad anyway. 
Although bear in mind, money in Scotland, there's not a huge amount these days unless you're Celtic. So you can pick up some decent players um, for quite low fees comparatively to elsewhere if you're not used to playing in Scotland anyway. But going back to the squad, I'll get sidetracked. I, I always do. But yes, three goalkeepers. John McLaughlin, 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 McLaughlin. Yeah, there we go. John McLaughlin, 29 years old. Now, he's the same ability as 23-year-old Jack Hamilton. So I've, I'm more inclined to give Jack Hamilton a go. I mean, McLaughlin isn't old for a goalkeeper, but I feel like Jack Hamilton's got the more potential to grow into a better goalkeeper. So I'm going to, at the, at the moment, my plan is to start Jack Hamilton ahead of John McLaughlin. Um, although, I don't know, maybe he's slightly better looking at his attributes, but there's nothing, there's not much in it. Our third choice is a 26 year old Swede who's not far off their ability either, to be honest. We've got three decent goalkeepers at this level. Victor Noring will be our third choice for the time being. At right back, we've got three options. First of all, more defensive option, Northern Irish Michael Smith. He's more he's a defensive fullback as you can see there, but not bad going forwards if you look his crossing attributes, physical attributes as well. Uh, and then we've also got Connor Randall who's on loan from Liverpool. Uh, that's why he's worth quite a bit of money compared to some of my players. Uh, but he's more of an attacking option at wing back. And I've actually had to play him left wing back because of an injury in pre-season to another loony. So he, he's done a good job there, actually, and he's got a very good average rating from the one Betfred Cup game that he did play. He got two assists in it, in fact. And the other option is a 19-year-old Jamie Brandon. Now, there's some pretty decent-looking youngsters in this squad, I must say. I think Hearts historically have been pretty good at bringing through young players. I remember on FM05 there was a lot of good young players uh, that I was able to build my squad around. So he's the third option at right-back. Uh, centre back, we've got we've only got three really. Uh, very old, 37 year old Aaron Hughes, who's still getting into the Northern Irish international team, 106 caps for his country. He will probably be back up, uh, but I'm there's I've, I've put together a couple of tactics which, which I'll show you in a second. One of my tactics is a three at the back tactic. So obviously, if I play that, then I'll have to play all three centre backs, which do doesn't give me much leeway if there's injuries. We've also got the legend that is Christoph Berra, who was around when I on FM05, and uh, th this was back here. So he had only just broken into the uh, into the Hearts team, in fact, yeah, the previous season, and I was able to to really turn him turn him into a very good player. Obviously, he played for Wolves and Ipswich for quite a few years before going back to Hearts. I presume it was last summer in real life rather than January, but I'm not 100% sure. But he is our captain and. He obviously is a Scottish international, 36 caps at the age of 32. He is our best defender. But not far behind is 20-year-old John Souter, who looks like he could be one for the future, but also one for now. He's my second best centre-back ahead of Aaron Hughes. And he's a bit of a ball-playing defender, which I like. you got to love that. I mean, that's the modern style of centre-backs, playing the ball out from the back. It's brilliant. So I think he can be a star. We'll have to try and hang on to him. It's, it could be difficult depending on how much potential he actually does have. I can't see. I've not got the in-game editor installed at all on this save. Uh, but my assistant believes he can turn into a good player for us anyway. Uh, whether it's good enough to to play in the English Premier League, uh, we shall see. I guess it depends on any, any bids coming in for him. Left back then. So like I said, I've been playing Connor Randall. And now left back is kind of a position I am looking for because I've only really got Dimitri Mitchell who's on loan from Manchester United who looks very good going forwards. Acceleration and pace are insane. Decent dribbling, crossing as well. Defensively a bit lacking um, which is why I'm going to be playing a complete wing back on the left hand side really. Uh, but yeah, other than that there's not really any other options which is... A little bit worrying. Lots of options in midfield. We've got some experience. We've got some really young players. We've got a good mix of really lots of experience and then some very young, talented players who are 16, 17 years old. Uh, but let's go through the midfielders one by one. The first one is a Frenchman, Mallory Martin, 28 years old. Current current ability is kind of okay for our midfield. We've got a lot of players who are a decent, similar ability. Uh, he's more of a deep line playmaker, as you can see here. Um, but he'll probably come off the bench rather than being a starter. Next up is a 16-year-old Harry Cochrane, who I have heard about 
in real life. He's an advanced playmaker in central midfield. You can see he does look pretty good for a 16-year-old. I think he can turn into a very good, very good uh, player for us. He's already well suited to the Labrooks Championship, the division below. So, yeah, looking forward to seeing him come through and shine over the next couple seasons. Let's let's hope so anyway, if we can hang on to him. Our, our main defensive midfielder is someone from Angola, 25-year-old Joachim Adao. He's got eight cups for Angola. He's only on loan, though, unfortunately, from Sion, who are based in Switzerland. And, yeah, he's, he's a good defensive midfielder. I think he can do a good job for us. Next up is Prince Buben, who, yeah, I'm probably just going to call Prince because that's brilliant. And he is an advanced playmaker as well. He's been at Hearts for a few years, as you can see there. He signed on a free about four years ago. You know, he's, we've got a lot of players who are just kind of average at everything in midfield which I think at this level is kind of what you need but if we are to catch the likes of Celtic and possibly even Rangers and Aberdeen then it's we need maybe a little bit more quality in there um, but we'll give it our best shot anyway this season. Next up is Arnaud Zoom from Cameroon, nine caps for his country at the age of 28. He looks slightly better probably than Prince I would say. I think he's our best central midfielder. He is according to my assistant. Um, but Dan Cowie is also very good, but we'll have a look at him in a second. We've then got 23-year-old Ross Callaghan, who I don't know if he's going to grow anymore, but he's kind of similar to the other, other midfielders we've already looked at, really. We've just got a lot of average midfielders who aren't particularly good at anything, but they're, they're all right at most things. Next up is a Danish player, Danny Amankwa. I love that name as well. Uh, and he's good. I think he's good as a right winger. He's got some pace, he's got some acceleration, he's got some dribbling ability, as you can see there. I think he can be a handy player on the right-hand side. Finishing is pretty poor, and we know from my Porto Manentesi save, Wellington on the right-hand side had a slightly better finishing than that and was a bit frustrating. So we might have some frustrating moments in front of goal from Danny Amanqua. Da Don Cowie is our most experienced midfielder likes to play as a Mazzala or a box-to-box -box midfielder or just a general central midfielder unfortunately everything's going down as he's getting older um, but he probably will be in the team most weeks because of the for the, the taxi that I'm playing we've then got some attacking players so Carl Lafferty he's experienced isn't he he's, only, he's still only 29 it seems like he's been around for ages he's got 20 goals uh, for Northern Ireland in 62 caps and he's going to be my main striker up front. Uh, we've got Milinkovic, who's uh, an inside forward on the left, a Serbian player on loan from Genoa. Um, but I'm not going to be playing a left midfielder. But he can still fit into my system for the time being, I think. He's played very well in the first two games, albeit it was against weak opposition. We've then got another 16-year-old, Anthony McDonald, who's quite versatile, can play in the attacking third of the pitch, as you can see there. Doesn't look particularly good. Uh, but we might give him some game time just to see if he does grow. Stephen Naismith, unfortunately, is injured. He's got two to three months left on this injury, and he's probably the best player at the team. On loan from Norwich, can play up front or as a shadow striker or on the wings or even in midfield. So he's a very versatile attacking player. And lastly, we have Ewan Henderson, a 17-year-old who can play on the left or up front. He's probably going to be my backup striker for now. We don't have a huge amount of strength in depth in certain positions. Midfield, we're fine, which is kind of why I'm playing this formation, which you will think is completely... You might think it's a bit bizarre. It's not majorly bizarre. Instead of having a left winger, we've just moved him inside as a, a shadow striker, uh, which you might think strange considering Milinkovic would rather play there. But my plan is to move Naismith in there when he's back from injury, and I just want to get this tactic up and running. Uh, we've got Randall on the left um, as a, a wing back on attack at the moment. It will be switched to a, a complete wing back when Mitchell is back in the team. But it's just allowing that player to space to get down the left hand side, and it worked brilliantly. Um, against Berwick Rangers, Randall picked up two assists. Whereas this side, we're more defensive with Smith because Amank was further forwards and we need a bit of a safety net behind him with this defensive player here. Whereas these midfielders will hopefully cover the left-hand side when required. We've got Adao as a ball-winning midfielder on support. We've got Mazzala who likes to drift out wide and Zoom as just a general advanced playmaker. Uh, but then you can you notice I've got Suter as a ball playing defender likes to play it from the back whereas Barra alongside him will be covering as a defensive centre back which will hopefully cover the fact that our wing back 
is going to be charging up and down that left hand side. That's the plan anyway. We'll see if that actually works. These are the team instructions for those of you interested. Like I said, it has worked well in pre-season. We'll have to see if it works well going forward in, in actual competitive games. I do have a backup, a second tactic, uh, which is just three at the back, well, three centre-backs with, with wing-backs and getting rid of the shadow striker, and a standard 4-4-2 as well. So, oh, it's all messed up. I hate it when it does this. Why is it all messed up? This is the season preview, then. We are expected to finish fourth ahead of our rivals, Hibernian. 45 to 1 to win the league. Celtic, of course, they are the favourites. Our two best players, according to this, Christoph Berra and Stephen Naismith. If I just show you a bit about Hearts, then. So, I don't think they've won the league for like 50 years or something. And you might, in the bottom right hand corner, you may have spotted 65,500 seater stadium. Well, that's because at the moment we're playing at Murrayfield until our, current, our own stadium is uh, kitted out, I guess. I'm not really sure what's happened to Tyne Castle, but I think. This, I think it's been expanded, basically. In fact, I think I saw it somewhere. But it doesn't seem to say anywhere. We're moving back in November anyway. You can see we've got very good training facilities, superb, in fact, and excellent youth facilities. So that's what we will aim to... Well, youth. We need to use our youth. And there is some potential here, but the, the good ones are the ones I've already got in the first team. And I'm hoping that we get some nice players come through every year in the youth academy. You can see Connor Salmon. <laughs> um, I'm kind of, I kind of wish they hadn't loaned him out to Partick Thistle because we don't really have many strikers. But then he's one of those strikers which is very frustrating because he's only got nine on finishing, and a striker with nine on finishing is like owning a car with no wheels. Uh, this is the history then of Hearts. Um, so yeah, they haven't won the league since 1960. They won it four times, and one of them, or well, two of them, were in the late 1800s. Uh, runners up lots, third place lots as well. But, yeah, we need to end that drought. Uh, they've won the Scottish Cup quite a few times, twice in more recent history in the in the noughties and in 2012. Uh, but the Betfred Cup hasn't been won since 1963. So, I'm aiming to win a trophy in this first season. I, I can see us winning the Betfred Cup. I know we haven't won it for years and years and years, but I, I have faith. I think we can do it. <laughs> Uh, we've only got one affiliate, which I actually managed to get in pre-season. Stenhouse Muir, who have good youth facilities or something, which is why I picked them. Um, I think there's a couple of different nicknames for hearts. We've got the Jambos, but I think the Jam Tarts as well. And I think there's another one, uh, but I'm not 100% sure. I, I did Wikipedia a couple of weeks ago now. I can't remember. Um, Derbies wise, we've got our first rivals, Hibernian, the Edinburgh Derby. And also other rivals, Rangers and Celtic, just for competitive reasons. They've, uh, traditionally, I guess, I remember when I was younger, it was used to be Celtic Rangers and then you'd have Hearts and Hibs just behind. Uh, Aberdeen are very good as well, and historically they've been pretty successful in Scotland, of course. Let's just have a look at the team then, compared with the rest of Sc the Scottish Premiership. I'll just turn my face off so you can see the bottom left-hand corner. Those are our strengths and weaknesses. Uh, our squad depth. Like I said, um, central midfield completely fine, right back fine, but left back a little bit lacking, centre back maybe we could do with another player, but I don't know, I'm kind of up for the task and challenge of just trying to, to use this current squad in this first season and see where we can go with that and then maybe make quite a few signings next year, I don't know. Uh, you can see we've actually got the youngest player in the Scottish Premiership. 16 years and 92 days, Harry Cochrane. It's so young. It's crazy. It's 10 years younger than me now. That's just scary. Um, if we just compare the team, I always like to do this at the start of the save just to show you how we compare to the rest of the Scottish Premiership. As you can see, from if we look at all positions, we're nowhere near the best or anything, really. The best here is teamwork, which is the third best. But Celtic are just easily the best. That's the problem. And... The highest average, you know, it's a long way above. We may have the, the third best aerial reach for goalkeepers in the league, but Craig Gordon probably is the best goalkeeper, isn't he? Defence-wise, uh, positioning's very strong, but there's quite a few things below average there, which might be a bit worrying. You know, with the midfield, yeah, you know, there's a lot of averageness. I've, that's the key word for our midfield, average. And as you can see, it kind of balances out as average. We've got decisions of the second best in the league and uh, technique third best but everything else is kind of you know in the middle which isn't 
great to see. Attacking wise, heading is is very strong. We will be playing the target man of Lafferty, of course, and long shots. But finishing is the tenth best in the league. Celtic have an average of fifteen on finishing. I don't know how we're going to do this season. I'm I'm really hoping we can somehow miraculously finish second ahead of Rangers and Aberdeen. But I don't know. I'm I'm not so sure. Last year, uh, Hearts finished. Fifth, I think. Yeah, fifth in the league. Previous season was third after their promotion season three seasons ago. But we should be... Well, we have to finish top half. We have to. No question about it. Dynamics. This is the hierarchy of the squad. So we've got three team leaders with Christoph Berak, Howie and Aaron. He's basically the old bunch. The old fogies on their Zimmer frames are the team leaders, which I'm... Yeah, I mean, that's just natural, isn't it? And we've got uh, Lafferty and Naismith in that highly influential group. Social groups, we do have three main groups, as you can see there, and then some others. Aaron Hughes doesn't seem to have mixed, nor has the Swedish player Noring, or uh, the Northern Irish player Martin, strangely enough. But hopefully they fall into some groups in, in over time. I, I don't really know how important these things are. I mean, obviously happiness and... Morale is very important on Football Manager, but how often do you look at these things? I just look at out look at it out of interest, really, to see who's friends and who's on their own. But there we go. Oh, finances. We'll just have a quick look at that. This is the wow. We've got loads of money. Seven point four million pounds in the bank. That's great. I think that's pretty good for Scottish football. So not bad at all. So like I said, next episode we're going to play our last two Betfred Cup games. We are top of the group after our two wins. Where are we? Group E, six points, but we do have Wraith and Morton, uh, who the two teams just below us. So we do need to be getting results against those two teams to, to progress to the knockout stages. Celtic will be episode three, so hope you're looking forward to that big one. That's going to be on television, which is lovely, away from home at Celtic Park. And then we uh, will get into proper business, because that's probably going to be a defeat as we take on Kilmarnock and then Rangers. That's a big one as well coming up, Aberdeen. So yeah, looking forward to the season. Hope you guys are too. If you haven't done so already, please hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. And there is a little bell button on YouTube because subscriptions don't work. It's annoying, I know, but subscriptions, they just don't work. You have to press the bell button to get notified. And even then, you don't always get notified. So if you're really you know, loving this series, maybe just check my channel at half three every weekday to, to see if I've uploaded a new video. Like I said, no promises about every day or anything, but I'll try and get as many up uh, as possible, basically. But until next time, as always, keep enjoying FM18. Enjoy the rest of your day. See you very soon.